Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop and today I wanted to go through a quick tutorial on using the material test tools within Lightburn to provide you better settings for your laser. I get a lot of questions in my videos about the settings I use on various projects and while I do tend to give them out as kind of a baseline, I strongly recommend that each time you're running new material that you use the material test tool to make sure you're dialing in the settings for your specific laser and your specific material. So if that's something you'd like to learn about, stay tuned, we're going to jump right into it. Okay, so we are in Lightburn now and I'm going to show you how to use the material test tool. And this can be done both on a line for cutting as well as a fill for engraving. So we're going to go ahead and start that out. So we are in Lightburn here. What we want to do is you want to come up to your laser tools menu. And in there, we are going to be using the materials test. Now that's going to open up another window. And from here, we're going to be setting our parameters. So for what I'm wanting to do, I'm going to start by testing out the cutting. And we're going to be doing that on a new 10 watt laser that I'm working on. So I'm going to pare this down. You, they default to 10 by 10. And what I'm going to do is show you this really quickly, what it, the preview is going to be. So this is the grid that it's going to be creating. And what it's showing you is that it's going to be doing it in power percentages from 10% on up to 100%. And then speed, here we have it in millimeters per minute, from 600 all the way up to 18,000. Now, obviously on a 10 watt dial laser, I'm not going to be needing to cut at 18,000. Matter of fact, even at 600 millimeters a minute, it's probably not going to cut. So we are going to make some adjustments to this. And so what we want to do is we want to come over here in our material setting side over here to say, we are going to go with the speed. We want to start at, uh, for a 10 watt laser, I'm going to say 150 millimeters a minute. And the maximum I'm going to do is 350 millimeters a minute. So that's going to set our range of the speed that we want to go. Now, the other thing we can do is we can set the number of steps through those speeds we want to divide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you really quick what that did. That changed this to start down here at 150 millimeters a minute on up to 350. But we get all these odd steps in between. So what we can do is we can drop that down by a couple. Let's go down to eight, go into preview. Now we're at 350, 321, 293. And uh, so you can play around with this to figure out where you want to kind of get your typical settings. And so I want to jump up by 25 each. So here we can see our speeds are now going from 150, 175, 200, 225, 250, all the way up to 350. So that is a great base for our speed. Now I also know that the power range at 150 millimeters a minute, a 10 watt diode is going to cut maybe at... 40 to 50. And that's probably our minimum range that we're going to get. So all of this is going to be wasted time. So what I can do, again, we can close this. We can cut our count, uh, our minimum power. We can bump this up to say 40%. And uh, now that's going to adjust our count. We actually still want to stay by 10. So I'm going to drop this down to, I believe, six. Uh, and oh, oh, that's still too many. Um, uh, five preview. Now we've got just 45, 55. Oops, I actually went the wrong way. I want to go seven. Now we should have 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. And we are setting our speeds from 150 all the way up to 350. So that sets our cut parameters. There's a couple more things we can tweak on here. If we go into uh, we want to make sure in our material settings we can adjust the passes. So if you're trying to actually set this up to say you want to go twice as fast but make double passes, you can adjust your scale and you can adjust your number of passes here. Uh, and so you have all the same settings as you would on your typical layer settings for cutting. The other thing we can do is we can edit the text setting. So in here, we can have it be either line or fill. So if you want them to be really dark and do more of an engraving, you can change that to fill, but I tend to leave it a line and put it at about a thousand speed millimeters a minute and about 45% power. It's enough to be able to see the text, but it doesn't need to take forever on uh, drawing that out. So there we have the two. Once again, we have our preview here of what it's gonna do. So it's gonna be going our power and our speed in this grid. It's giving us an estimated speed time of six uh, minutes 45 seconds again that's going to be dependent on your laser and what it reads for its parameters 
So the other thing we need to worry about is where it's gonna start. So I set mine up to try to start in the middle of the laser. So here it's at 202, 202. Uh, that's based on this one, which is technically set up as a 405 squared laser. And then you can actually use the framing tool to make sure that your laser is going to hit that. So at this point we would hit start and it would start the job. Let's go ahead and send that to the laser and uh, we'll see what the results are after this. All right, so we finished the cut and as you can see here, it uh, did pretty well and our guessing was pretty close. Didn't get as quiet as we needed, so we really didn't need those top two rows of 325 and 350. Um, so you see we're, we're topping out at 100% power at 300 millimeters a minute and down at the bottom, we're bottoming out at about 50% power and 150 millimeters a minute. And if you look at the back, I did a couple of them did just take a little tapping out to take, and as a matter of fact, we could almost get that 325 out with just a little bit of, yeah, there we go, a little bit of encouragement. So there we go, we can even get a, an extra one and possibly some of these others where they don't need a whole lot. Um, but I like to go by where they fall out because you're gonna have a little variation in your material. So um, there you go, uh, fairly linear, a few variations. But now we know that on this material, which is three millimeter Baltic birch plywood, uh, that we can get our speed and uh, power settings dialed right in. That's a good idea just to write down the laser and the material on here, keep this as a reference or keep photos of them as a reference. So next we are gonna jump into setting up your engraving or your scan settings and see how those go from there. So let's get into that next. Okay, so now that we've done the cut, we're going to work on the engraving settings. And so we're gonna go back into that same tool it's so up here in laser tools, material test, and we're gonna start making our adjustments. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the material settings. And instead of line, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an, a fill. Um, we do, I'm gonna, I usually leave overscanning on. It just allows the acceleration to uh, compensate. Uh, and 2.5, 3% is usually good for that. Line interval, we're gonna dump, jump this down to 0 0.08, which is typical of these diode lasers as for their focus spot. And then we are going to jump this back up to 100% for max power. Uh, you can adjust fill all shapes at once, fill groups together, fill shapes individually. Uh, I'm gonna leave them as fill all shapes at once for this test, but you can play around with that for your speed as well, but it's not gonna, it shouldn't affect the output of the, uh, the results of the test. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and start uh, setting up our parameters here. So um, we are going to go with our 10 to 100% power on this because we're looking for the best engraving quality for speed. And so as your speed goes up, your power uh, needs to go up. At, but as your speed goes down, you can get you can get uh, the same type of quality maybe at a lower power setting as well. But also in our engravings, we want to have a gradient. So what we're going to end up looking for is something that's just a very faint, almost marking up to about as dark as we can get without overburning. Now, the other thing we need to look at is our minimum and maximum speeds. Now, they say the engraving speed on this one is 150 millimeters a second, and that calculates out to 9,000 millimeters a minute. So that is going to be our maximum speed. And generally, I will go by 1,000 millimeters a minute increment. So here we're gonna go 1,000 up to 9,000. We're gonna drop this down to eight, and we'll set our preview. Oh, screwed that up. So here what I'm looking for is for these to be in increments of 1,000, there we go. So now we have our power 10% all the way up to 100% across the bottom, 1,000 all the way up to 9,000 across the top. We've got our interval of 0 0.08. And what you're seeing here with these kind of fuzzy red lines is it's showing the uh, travel move. So if you wanna turn that off, you just click this box, it's gonna take that away. But the red is showing where it's going to be moving that laser head. And so it, that's the amount of distance it has to go to speed up and slow down and have a consistent burn across these. So that's why you see it less here on up there because the speed is so much higher. It takes that much more to slow down and then reverse and go back while keeping your power consistent. So um, we're gonna leave the same with our text because that looked really well on our cut one. Um, we're gonna go with the full um, 10 to 100 and 1,000 to 9,000 here 
and let's just get this set up again we're running this on three millimeter baltic birch again you're going to want to run this on any different material because what works on baltic birch might be different on maple versus cherry versus walnut wood same thing with slate glass and stainless steel you're going to want to run this on every single material you work with to ensure that you are getting the best results for that material with your laser so let's go ahead and send this to laser and see how it looks All right, and so we finished the burn. And so as you can see, um, we do have a nice gradient here and including at the bottom, and I, I pretty much suspected this was gonna happen. That really blew out at 100% and 1,000. So um, you really wanna be careful in running this. You're keeping an eye on it because this actually, as you can see, burned through the wood on those. Um, but as we come up there higher, you can see where the 10% is fading out and you really kind of see the middle of this gradient uh, right across, uh, let's see here, uh, you have that in the middle to where it's kind of a scale in the middle there where you can kind of judge that if you're going for kind of a medium burn that maybe something like 6,000 millimeters a minute and 70% power is might be a sweet spot. Really kind of depends on how your dark you're going for, how deep you're going for, and the consistency you're going for. So um, the other thing you can look at this as, as far as photo engraving, what we're looking for is just some really faint markings over here on up to uh, fairly dark markings over here. And so when you're looking for a grayscale pixelated image, you want that full range. So in this case, we might start our tests um, somewhere around the four to 5,000 millimeters a minute um, from 10 to 100% power if we were to be doing those photorealistic um, pixelated engravings. So hopefully that helps you get an idea of how you can use these material test settings to dial in what your laser needs and what each material needs. So do use this, plan on a little extra material, some waste material if, every time you test something new. Uh, run these and it'll help you save a lot of headache of trial and error when uh, trying to find the settings that you need. I hope you found this video informational. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave them down below. I too try to get back to those as often as I can. And uh, if you like what you saw here and wanna see more, I'd always appreciate it if you could subscribe. I do try to put out a video at least once a week, as well as do live streams uh, on my own, as well as with Clack Shack to answer questions and uh, show off projects we're working on. So uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this. It was great seeing you here and I hope until next time, you can get out in your workshop and make something too. Have a great day.